Hello. Hello. Anyone around here speak basketball? Trust in Messiah. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball, Basketball Podcast. Podcast. I am your host, Freddie Rivas. And who, sir, all decked out in Raptors gear are you? I'm the producer. My name is Matt Duncan. And we've got a lot of mats on the show today. I just hope everyone's excited for that. It's a mat attack. It's a and... mat extravaganza. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Fred, how you doing? Uh, I am doing pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah. If you're tuning into this podcast for the first time or coming back, uh, we are Raptors hardcores. We have comedians, analysts. We're on Raptors Republic. If you're a hardcore basketball fan, you've arrived at the right place and uh, or and or thanks for coming back. But uh, if people want to help us, you know, grow, become like Dak Shepard and like have a massive Spotify contract or whatever, uh, how are they going to help us do that? Matty D. Well, if you're watching our segments that we put on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the Raptors Republic page. We appreciate it. So do they. You can always go to RaptorsRepublic.com. All the articles are there as well as all the podcasts. So you can click on each post and listen, watch there as well. It's so easy. And our website's finally up, DunksPodcast.com. Check it out. Our, our in-house graphic designer put a lot of work into it. So shout out to my wife, Taylor, for uh, you know putting a lot of labor into you know making this site work so yeah check it out if you want that's uh also got you know links to all our old episodes that we did before raptors republic you know as we've you know we're just short of 250 episodes now so you know it's a wow. it's a time capsule and yeah uh you should definitely check it out if you want to hear hear the past get a reminder sure sure people love the past <laughs> um massive shout out uh just jumping on uh your your kind of shout out bandwagon there maddie d to uh to taylor taylor mclean you're incredible the new website is amazing it's straightforward it uh you know has has a nice about section it looks profesh it feels profesh and uh yeah. we're absolutely blessed to have someone that talented on our side so thank yeah. you very much tay we um i mean i want to say certainly can't repay you for your work <laughs> so just yeah accept our endless gratitude please um but uh yeah i think let's dive right in uh, i will say as i've been saying uh since she's been unlawfully detained in russia uh free britney griner if you don't know what i'm talking about google britney griner uh it's an absolute travesty what's happening um and uh i think everyone hopes for her safety uh, i I've been covering the uh, the story with my uh, co-host Catherine Niker from uh, a pickup or the pickup a WNBA podcast, uh, so you can check that out if you want to get more in detail. But um, yeah, just be loud about it and uh, you know get involved in any way you can. And I think uh, with that, let's get going on Raptors talk, Mister Duncan. If you'd give me your uh, weirdest automated uh, most topical reference, Raptors sting. Toronto Raptors, who's their mascot, Fred Flintstone. There we go. Nice and topical. Is that Gilbert Godfrey? What? Gilbert. <laughs> I misspelled it. You misspell Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert. You know what? Rest in peace, Gilbert. That's, listen, if we ever get hate mail, this is the one. Um, I'm glad I guessed I'm glad I guessed uh, the the voice finally. I'm always off, but I've watched Aladdin a bunch, so I think that helps. Um, okay, uh, this question is actually coming from McCready. Um, we were talking the other day. Uh, it's a great question, a little bit of a homework-based question. 
And I think uh, the way I want to do this is sort of uh, we'll, we'll start with your list and then we'll kind of just, you know, go to Henry, go to me, and then we'll see, um, it, you know, where the crossover is and, you know, what um, what's missing or, or whatnot. The question is, uh, you know, Raptors Vision 6-9, the franchise version. Uh, I, I want everyone to choose an, the best eight man rotation of all time between the height of six, seven and six, nine. So six, seven, six, eight, or six, nine, uh, basketball reference is the tiebreaker. Some very notable Raptors are six, six or six, 10. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what we got. Uh, McCready, you can start us off. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh this was a lot of fun to go for there. Yeah. The, the notable six sixes you got, uh, you got, you know, Doug Christie, DeMar DeRozan, Vince Carter. That's so we're right. missing out on a few. Um, and I, I, I want to just ask you one last question, Freddie. So when we pick these players, we're picking them from when they played with the Raptors, right? I I was mostly doing that. And then I basically my rotation is guys who, you know, featured prominently on the Raptors. But okay. I was looking for some sneaky picks. Uh, and I did, I did pick a guy who, you know, was very briefly on the Raptors, but he's at the edge of the rotation. So if you have one of those guys, I love it. All right. Well, okay. So I'll just go positional because there's no real positions because they're all over the place. But mm. at point guard, I have uh, Pascal Siakam. Pretty cool nice. guy. Yeah. Uh, at shooting guard, I got Tracy McGrady. Oh, yeah. uh, so if you have the Raptors McGrady, you have more of a defensive kind of guy. If you have uh, Orlando McG- McGrady, uh, you have a complete beast. Uh, small forward, you got Kawhi Leonard, uh, mm-hmm. a notable uh, champion, if you will. Uh, at uh, power forward, we've got OG Ananobi, and oh, I'm yeah. going to take this year's OG because uh, I like him the best. And at center, yeah. the weirdest pick out of the five, because f- those four seem pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, but at center, I'm going to go with Danielle Marshall. Ooh. Uh, get some floor spacing in there. Three sure. point, he shot over 40% both years. Uh, he was with the Raptors from three. Yeah, 12 uh, threes in a game. 12 threes, man. He had the record for like 15 years. Let's just say 15 years. Let's uh, let's lie a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then we have on the bench, I have uh, Scotty Barnes. Sure. And because yeah. um, you said seven man rotation. And then the final mm-hmm. guy, this is why I asked about like, are we going to get their uh, Raptors time or their other time? Uh, Sean Marion. Yes. My that, that was my guy as well. That's who I thought. Yeah. I guess because. Um, because he was still good. He was like 30 years old when he was with the Raptors. So he was like a little bit past his like Matrix uh, shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was, uh, he was still very, very good at that point. Uh, I love your list. Uh, it's, um, yeah, there's just pretty much only one guy that I have uh, that you don't. Our only difference is, uh, is Danielle Marshall. Yeah, um, fair enough. Uh, and, uh, I, I thought about him as well. Uh, I, I think I elected for absolutely no spacing on my team. Um, <laughs> you put Oakley in there? Uh, honestly, Oakley, uh, very close. So he was, he was in my, like, yeah, Henry, I think Scott Oakley on his he, team. He was in my cuts list. Okay. Uh, what's up, Henry? You, you hit us up with your list and then, yeah, maybe we can, uh, I'll jump in with mine and we can talk like, you know, cuts. I just, whatever. I just assumed what they said, you're looking at him. At their best, ideally, you're playing. I guess I shouldn't have looked at it as uh, as they played for the Raptors. I just looked at people who played for the Raptors before, and I was like, "Oh man, that guy's good." That's um, fine. Yeah, fair enough. Who cares? So <laughs> if, and obviously, position-wise, we'd have to work on it. So I have Antonio Davis there. He's listed at six nine. That was my uh, guy. I also have. So I got Scotty. Uh, I have Pascal. I've got T Mac and Jalen Rose. And I just found out because um, DeMar DeRozan is not 6'8", so I had to take him off. And I, as I'm quickly scrolling, I did not realize Steve Novak played for the Toronto Raptors. And Steve Novak? Steve, <laughs> Steve Please Novak tell me he's, he's not factoring in onto your team. He, he Well, the, cor- the corner three is for somebody, okay? <laughs> and that corner, I'm sure it's going to be open, okay? So give me uh, Steve Novak off the bench. Oh my lord! And, and do not do not judge me on that because I had to quickly make a couple of, make make a couple of adjustments. I didn't really uh, realize how many uh, how many people I needed on uh, for this list. Do you um, have Steve Novak, Novak over Siakam on your team? No, no, no. Pascal starts. Oh, okay, Rose okay. starts. T Mac starts. Scotty starts. Antonio Davis starts. 
And right. then uh, we'll just pull in Steve Novak. We're up by 20. <laughs> and Kawhi's, yeah. Kawhi's does make the cut. Fair enough. I also, maybe I was looking at the wrong. <laughs> yep. Okay. Throw the whole podcast away. I, uh, <laughs> what's he listed at? You see, that's an interesting one. I thought this kind of stuff would come up more because uh, I've seen Kawhi listed at 6'6 six, six before. But um, yeah. in basketball reference, I have him at 6'7. Ooh. Also, okay. an, an interesting one for me is um, I have I so Scotty Barnes came into the season listed at six seven. He's now listed at six nine. All right, so uh, I guess I'll trade Steve Novak. I guess I guess I, I'm reluctant, but yeah, uh, I guess no, Steve, Nack, off the bench. Steve Novak over Kawhi for sure. I'm with you. Um, <laughs> but, sure. Uh, yeah, Are you, you positive? Know, he has, you know Steve Novak like 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 when he's in the playoffs, he could dunk over Giannis for sure. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's my hope. There's no, no missing guys. Uh, I guess I'll just say some of my cuts and I'll also shout you out for, uh, Jalen Rose. I think he's a really, uh, I, I just assumed he was like six, four, six, five. I checked a basketball six, reference. He's six, eight. So that's what, that's what I found in a Matt. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I guess some, some guys that I thought, you know, maybe, maybe could be on the team, but are, are cuts for me. My, my team's, yeah, Kawhi, Pascal, OG, T Max, Scotty, Marion, and Antonio Davis. Uh, and my cuts are Amir Johnson, JYD, mm. Precious, and Oakley. Oh. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, J- Jalen Rose. But, uh, Super fun question. Um, yeah, I, I I made a list originally of twenty one people. Wow, uh, cut it down to seven. Um, so I had an, in order after uh, Barnes. I had a uh, Mo Pete, uh, Garbahosa, uh, Patrick Patterson, Boucher, Scola, Antonio Davis, Bismack Biombo, James Johnson, Jamario Moon, Rudy Gay, Jason Capono, Jalen Rose, and Charles Oakley. Ooh, you know what? Uh, to thinking about people in their prime. Prime Scola could perhaps be a not Raptor Scola, but Prime. You oh, you know, get like 2004 Scola, yeah, Argentine Prime. national team, just that exactly. two week period Scola. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, I think you know he he was he was part of one of the uh, Spurs championships. I think. Uh, was he perhaps? I think he played with Houston for a while. I think the Spurs had his rights and they traded them to Houston. But I could okay, be you you might be right there. Um. Uh. Maybe I'm thinking of a just because Manu was on the team, you know, just other <laughs> Argentinians were welcome. Okay. Well, uh, last question. We got a bonus question. Uh, I'm going to stick with you, Henry. Um, yeah, this is sort of in a little bit in the same vein, but I guess kind of different. Uh, so I've seen a bunch of discourse about Warriors fans. Uh, you know, uh, it's not Oracle Arena. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, Crypto Arena as well. Whatever. Um, it's. Uh, yeah, it's not as loud as it used to be. The fans aren't as raucous, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, they went from Oakland to San Francisco. That's a big change. Um, so maybe there's like a Silicon Valley uh, sort of thing going on there. Uh, but, you know, most expensive team or payroll in, in the NBA. Uh, so maybe perhaps it's a priced out thing. I'm not sure. But uh, regardless of how you feel about, uh, you know, the Warriors, uh, th- this is sort of like, the question is kind of, does winning a championship negatively impact fans or, or their psyche towards their team? And uh, what is the best uh, fan base in the NBA? Uh, first, second question, that's easy. That's us. We, we the best. Raptors, we the best. When it comes okay. to uh, best fan base, that's not hesitating. But I think in regards to your question, of are they a little bit quieter? Yeah, you know why? Because they're used to winning. There, there's an expectation there, and you have this. It's not like you have a, a brand new roster. You've got a group of guys who they they have an expectation out of. So of course they might be a little quieter when they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But I, the idea is, this is what is supposed to happen. So you, they're 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 going to act that way. Um, and I, I I don't want to say I understand it because I've never lived that life, you know. <laughs> But I, I bet you, let, let, let the Raps win win five titles. You know what I mean? We go into the game, and we're going to enjoy ourselves. But, I mean, if, they, if they're not playing like the team that's won four rings, you know, you're not, you're not going to cheer as nearly as loud. And then when they do win, it's like, yeah, you know what? This is what's supposed to happen. This, this is our lives right now. And I can't wait to cheer a little bit quieter because the Raptors have won 
X amount of titles. That would be nice. It would yeah. be nice to have. It's, it's a luxury to be able to, to to not go crazy. But the thirst from the fans, ideally, that does not match what the players are doing because you want the players to play as hungry as if they'd never won before. And maybe that's hard to create, but that's what you got to do to win. But, yeah, I, I personally, I just think it's because they're used to it. This is this is the M.O., and, you know, so that's what you get. Uh, fair points all around. Uh, I, uh, you know, just to add on to your point, I want the Raptors to win so much that it's like a library in there. Yep. And, <laughs> and we a just collective win. yawn from the yeah. audience. What three yeah. point is made. <laughs> That's right. If we don't Freddy, dominate, I'm still booing, bro. You understand me? I'm still talking as reckless. Cause I like, I like going to the game and I like, Making millionaires feel bad. You know what I mean? Look, look, come hey, on. Honestly, I went there with you. I you, you, like listen. I, you're not bluffing. You do. You're the loudest person within like whatever a thirty. You know, they or, can sorry, hear like me. Eighty person I, range. Yeah. And they got to pay me to be an, an assistant coach at this point. You know what I mean? They don't have to pay me. Just give me better seats. And uh, so I'll yell just as loud. But uh, I, I'm still going to be that guy because I'm a hardcore fan. But personally. I think not everybody is like me with that mindset, and mm-hmm. that's what you get. But you, you, you gotta, you, you, you have to. How do I, how do I say this as I uh, run out of breath on this? They're not everyone's gonna be like that, and those fans are gonna be like that. But when you're used to it, you're used to it, and maybe you don't, uh, you don't cheer as hard. No, that's very fair and very true, and I, and I think like an expectation, you know, sort of like correlation is is exactly what we're talking about. Like, and I think. You know, I, I was there when when the Raptors lost uh, in in the conference finals to Cleveland, and to that point, that's the furthest we had come, and we were chanting "Let's go Raptors" for like seven straight minutes, and um, you know, people were chanting uh, when 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 the Raptors were uh, eliminated. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to go to uh, Game Six in my season seats, three uh, section three hundred nine. But, uh, you know, people were leaving the game too, right? And they're getting heckled as they left. So dynamics are changing. Uh, okay, McCready. Yes. Um, what, uh, you know, say, same to you. Kind of like, does winning, I guess, negatively impact uh, a franchise's fan psyches? Is it just a normal thing, like Henry's saying? Uh, I, think, and I think the more... The sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. And just the, the other part is, uh, what's the, the best for, uh, fans in your opinion? Um, the best fans in the NBA are those that are actively booing the Boston Celtics. There's some in every single arena of this great uh, continent. Uh, Good happen. answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's my that's my cheap answer for that one. Uh, yeah, I think like there is like so like the more you win, the more you're gonna pr- you're I don't the more you win, the less the crowd is going to reflect uh, the average fan. Because the mm-hmm. games become less about basketball and more of a trendy thing to go and do. I went right. to that game six as well. My brother-in-law's uh, rich. He took me. Uh, we sat in the lower bowl. I've never really sat in the lower bowl for fuck. I'd never been to a playoff game before, before I went to that. Hey, man. Yeah, happy happy that you went. Yeah, I mean, it was a great first half. Um, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, and this this couple were sitting next to us. We thought we, they just weren't going to come. They show up in the third quarter. Don't say a thing the entire time. They're on their phones the entire time. They're there for like 15 minutes. And then they look at each other and they get up and leave. Wow. And it's like, these are people who aren't basketball fans at all. They are given a ticket because of somebody that they know. And so they just show up to the game. They waste two seats. You lose out on that audience stuff. And there are they the average person there? No. But they, it is a reflection of what's happening to the Raptors brand in general and that it's becoming an elitist type of thing right uh, you know it's like if you I, i've always wanted them to have one game a year that's a matinee that's just open to like school kids and stuff just to like have a raucous insane crowd or just uh mad and his friends you know like whatever like get something crazy in there you know but yeah i think like yeah i think it's just becoming a a, a status symbol at times I, the deeper they yeah. go in the playoffs, the more expensive they get, and the more status will it will be achieved by going. I totally agree. I remember uh, I got to go to game two of the uh, the finals where uh, you know we lost on the Iguodala three, and 
in my section, I've never seen people dressed that nice uh, as, they, as, <laughs> as they were. Uh, you know, the, everything, everyone was looking real good. And uh, I was like, this is a different vibe. And uh, at that time, I was actually working at the AGO. Uh, there was a, a, a kind of like a uh, artist star exhibit. It was a uh, Yayo Kusama. I was working the Kusama exhibit. And that was all about status as well. And I remember just thinking like, wow, this is like, I think everyone came from the Kusama exhibit straight to the game. <laughs> um, and they're all so rich and, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different vibe. Um, but, uh, I, lo- I love your, you love your Boston answer. My, my lower answer- bowl sucks. And I hate the lower, like not like Matt, Matt aside, I think like the typical fan, the lower bowl, the air can, the center or the Scotiabank arena is so much worse than the upper deck. It's not, even I, close. Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree. And I think we should have a matinee and I just want to shout out the WNBA. If you're ever bored and looking for highlights, uh, the highest scoring game ever is by uh, Liz, Liz Campage. And it was in a matinee with like uh, tons of children. And the children are so loud. They're, yeah. scre- they're chanting and screaming. It's like, like a European like soccer match. Uh, European football match, pardon me. And um, yeah, it was just like, it was wild. And I feel like it fueled her. And she was just, you know, kind of like beasting out there and killing it and like, I guess staring kids down. Uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it was awesome. Like, please I check the, out. Yeah. I hope the kids yeah. are all booing her. Yeah, I think we are were... at a basketball game. You, you like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to, you got to get crazy. You're you're at a basketball game. You're at, in a place where you're supposed to be loud. How often do you get that in, in your life? In anything? In any event, you can go to where you get to be loud, and you can voice your displeasure as loud as you can. It's rare. You know what I mean? Like you got, you got, you got to boo a little bit. So yes, I would like to uh, fill up the ACC uh, with fifty thousand, my friend. That's my new favorite thing. I'm gonna write a couple of letters, and uh, ideally, you know, let me. I'll talk to Drake. He walks past me a couple of times, so I'll be like, "Hey, Drake, let's let's split it." You know what I mean? Sixty <laughs> forty. I don't know. <laughs> you bring your friends, I bring my friends, and then you upgrade my seats a little bit, so we can boo extra hard. That's what that's what life's for. Hell yeah. Listen to full episodes of the Confederacy of Dunks only on the Rapcast.